The information used in this presentation came from the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. In 2009, the latest year for statistics, there were close to 37,000 reported deaths from suicide in the United States. That breaks down to a person taking their own life every 15 minutes. Every day, approximately 100 Americans succeed in taking their own life. This statistic is most troubling. For every successful suicide, anywhere from 8 to 25 people will make an attempt to take their own life. True or false? Most suicides happen around the holidays. False. Statistically, most suicides will happen in April, June, and July. Researchers are not sure why this occurs. What is the most frequent method of suicide? 52% of all people who kill themselves do so with a firearm. The use of a firearm is the number one method in those aged 35 and up. This graph shows the rate of suicides per 100,000 of population since 1993. Women are more likely than men to have stronger social supports and feel that their relationships are a deterrent to suicide. Women are more likely to seek psychiatric and medical intervention, which may contribute to their lower rate of completed suicide. Observable signs of serious depression might include an unrelenting low mood, their state of mind appears to be always down in the dumps. Pessimism. They show a high level of pessimism or negativity. Hopelessness. They might feel that there is no future for them. They have a bleak outlook on life. Desperation. Perhaps they feel that the world is closing in on them and they become desperate to find a way out. But in their mind, there is no way out. Anxiety and inner tension. Maybe you'll notice that they worry about everything, and that worry is increasing their levels of stress or inner tension. Withdrawal. Are they withdrawing from activities they used to enjoy doing? Other warning signs might include difficulties getting the rest they need, or perhaps they sleep a great deal or take to their beds. You might observe an increased use of alcohol or the abuse of drugs, both prescription and illegal. Reckless behavior, sudden decisions and risk-taking may also be observed. Sometimes the potential suicide victim will actually verbalize their desire to die. Unexpected and unusual rage or anger that seems to come out of nowhere. Making a plan. Many suicide victims will formulate a plan maybe write a letter, maybe give away their prized possessions, CDs, clothing, or jewelry. They may suddenly buy or purchase a firearm. Obtaining other means of killing oneself, such as poisons or medications, or rope or flexible metal exhaust tubing. This graph shows the suicide rate by age group for 2009. Please take note of the spike of suicides in the 45 to 64 age group. This graph shows the rate of suicide by age group since 2000 per 100,000 population. 
Some other risk factors may include psychiatric disorders. At least 90% of people who kill themselves have a diagnosable and treatable psychiatric illness, such as schizophrenia, depression, bipolar depression, or post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD is something that many of our service people contend with. Other disorders may include anxiety disorder, bulimia, anorexia, or personality disorders, especially borderline or antisocial. Other risk factors may include the loss of a job, the loss of a relationship, or sexual preference. Genetic predisposition. Sometimes it's just in the genes. Impulsive people do not tend to think the action all the way to its conclusion. Neurotransmitters. Sometimes it's just a chemical imbalance in the brain. This graph shows a distribution of suicide rates by race for the year 2009. You'll note that those of Hispanic and African American descent are 12%. 15% for those of Asian descent, 29% for those of American Indian or Eskimo descent. The largest block is 32% for Caucasian. So what can we do to help? When you see some of the warning signs occurring in a person's life or their behavior changes dramatically, take it seriously. Don't assume that they're just joking around or that they'll snap out of it. 50 to 75 percent of all suicides give some warning of their intentions to a friend or a family member. Heed all the warning signs. You may just be the one person that they're reaching out to. Imminent signs must be taken seriously. Don't shrug your shoulders and walk away. Be willing to listen. In these days of instant communication, we all do a great job of talking mainly about ourselves. When a potential suicide is looming, the focus should be on the possible suicide victim and not on ourselves. Close your mouth, open your ears, and listen. Let them know you are concerned. Don't shy away from asking if they are thinking about suicide. The more information you can get from them, the better you can help them. Have they seen their therapist? Who is their therapist? Have they taken their prescribed medications? Do not attempt to argue someone out of suicide. Rather, let the person know you care and they are not alone. Tell them that suicidal feelings are temporary and that depression can be treated. Avoid such statements as, you have so much to live for, your suicide will hurt your family. Presently, they're probably not sensing that they have anything to live for and it could be possible that the potential suicide victim wants to hurt his family. We are not suicide prevention experts, but there are professionals who do know a lot about preventing suicides. Seek them out. Be actively involved in encouraging the person to see a physician or a mental health professional immediately. Those contemplating suicide often don't believe that they can be helped, so you may have to do more. Help the person find a knowledgeable mental health professional or treatment center and take them there for treatment. In an acute crisis, if you are face-to-face -face with a possible suicide, do not leave the person alone. Remove from the vicinity any firearm, drugs, or sharp objects that could be used for suicide. Take the person to an emergency room or a walk-in clinic at a psychiatric hospital. If the above options are unavailable, call 911 
or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 8255. Okay, the acute crisis has passed. Now what? Keep the lines of communication open. Visit them often. Become a minister of presence. Don't be afraid to talk about suicide with the potential victim. Show them that you care. Check on their medications. The pill tray is not contemplating suicide. They are. Make sure that they are taking their meds. Stay in support mode. Show them that you are sincere about their well-being. This graph shows the leading causes of death. Suicide is right in the middle. Suicide, along with homicide, is very preventable. People do not have to take their own lives. We can help by becoming more knowledgeable and by getting involved when we see the warning signs. Remember, suicide is preventable.